Hey, welcome back you to another week of study. As always, hope that we can start off blessed in the Lord Jesus Christ. <sighs> Two more, one more unit. No, one more class, I believe it is. And we'll be finished with this book. We'll be starting a new book, okay? But we're still finished. We're still on unit four. We're talking about being enriched in Christ, okay? Being enriched in Christ. Today is, uh, we're on study number 25. Um, already read it. We're going to get the meat out of this thing. And we can see what the Holy Spirit is going to do, okay? Today, what he's going to teach us, all right? We're going to just open our hearts and our minds and whatever he has for us today, we know it's going to be good because all good things come down from the Father's lives. Amen? Amen. Let's do the most important thing and pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this time that you always set aside that we can come to your table, that we can eat the bread of life, that we can drink from your cup, that live in water, God. We can drink of your blood in the New Testament, Lord God. We thank you for always desiring to save us, God, that your will, that no man should perish, that all should come to repentance. So, God, I pray for the youth today, God, to help them see you for who you really are, God, the sovereign God, the only God, the true and living God, the God that saves, the God that loves, the God is love, and the God that forgives. God, I thank you for remission of sins that come through the blood of Jesus Christ. So I thank you, God, for enlightening the minds of the youth today, God, God, getting them their identity and not let the world give it to them, God. Let them see you. God, in everything that they do and glorify you, God, and let them see their purpose and know their purpose in you, God. Help them to walk according to our class today. Help them to walk in you, Jesus Christ. Help them to walk in the spirit and not in the lust of their flesh, God. Give them clarity today with understanding, with simplicity, and we pray all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you. Study number 25. Still on 24. Enriched in Christ. Being enriched in in Christ, enriched in Him, not in society, not in the world, not in uh, things, temporary things, not in fame, fortune, not in money, uh, none of that, not in purple, uh, being popular, none of that, being enriched in Christ. That's the difference, okay? So when you got Christ, you got the fullness of the God here bodily. Amen. You got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to start reading in Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 17. And this is a letter um, from Apostle Paul to um, the Ephesians, the church in, in Ephesus, okay? This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their minds, having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness and work all uncleanliness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, put in away lying. Let each one of you speak truth to his neighbors, for we are members of one body. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Okay? Don't let your sin, don't let your anger festate. Don't let it grow roots. Okay? Get rid of it quickly. Before you close your eyes and go to sleep, go ahead and get rid of that thing. Give it to God and ask for forgiveness and, and, and forgive whoever it is that you need to forgive and get that anger uh, <laughs> Uh, away from you, okay, and so it won't grow roots because if you let it fester around, it will grow the roots. And the Bible said it's okay to be angry, but do not sin and don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So, I mean, don't hold it for a long period of time because if you do, the anger is going to start turning, going to start growing uh, roots. And you know what a root does? When they get dug in, it stabilizes itself. And now, instead of being angry, now you're bitter. 
Uh, and Pastor Lord, she taught a lot of them about bitterness, okay? And still teaching on it. Um, no give place to the devil, okay? Our uh, memory verse is that you put off concerning the former conduct or the former conversations of the old man, which grows corrupt accordingly to the deceitful lust. We just read that in Ephesians 4.22. Our main idea today is the church of Christ should walk the way that he walked <laughs> because he lives within it, but he is the head of the church. So he set the example. He the one set the rules. He set the laws. He tells us what to do. He tells us what not to do. Christ tells us what the Father's pleased with, and he tells us what the Father's not pleased with. And when he ascended back to the glory of the Father, then he left the Holy Spirit down here, the Spirit of truth. And he will direct us and lead us in all spiritual truth. And his job is to bring all things back to remembrance what Christ has taught us through his holy word. Period. Okay? Now, the three objectives that we're going to accomplish today is the first one we're going to find that the Christian life is not a theory, but it is an expression of a new life. I want to read that again. To understand that the Christian life is not a theory, it's not something that just, uh, it's not proven, it's not true, it's not real, just a, a myth. It's, it's, it's something that it could be, but we're not sure. We're still working on it to find out. We're still investigating. No, 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 no. It's an expression of a new life. You should not have to tell nobody that you are a child of God or follower of Christ. You should not have to tell nobody with your mouth. They should see it. They should see the fruit. <laughs> they should see the fruit. They should, they should see the expression that you are walking in the spirit of God. They should see it, not you just telling them. There's a lot of people that tell that I'm a Christian, but then when you see the fruit, it's not the fruit of repentance. It's fruit of deceitfulness and lust and selfishness and all that pride and all that junk, okay? And two, to know that Christians battle their old nature throughout their whole lives, okay? It's a battle going on. It's a war. The Bible says it's a spiritual warfare, okay? The spirit against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit, okay? It's, it's carnality and spirituality. It's, 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 a, it's a war going on, and whoever you feed the most is what's going to be stronger, okay? That's why it's imperative. It's, you have to. It's a must. You can't live without it. You have to read your Bible. You have to learn the new way of life. You, 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 we are living in a, a, a new life, so we got to learn that new life, okay? So we got to fast. We got to do all those things that pertain unto godliness. We have to. It's a must, okay? And three, to learn to walk in victory with Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. We got to learn to walk in victory, with Christ. We got to learn. We got to learn. We got to learn. We got instructions. We got to learn. Okay? Amen. So, the real thing I want to point out today, just listen to the words from the old man that Apostle Paul said that we once were, and, the, and some Gentiles and Jews right now are, are still walking in this way compared to the new life. Okay? The words from the old life, okay, that, we, that God is not pleased with is darkened, alienated, ignorant, blindness, uncleanness, greediness. <laughs> Those things should be, that's the part of the old man. It's the former thing that God is not pleased with, but he said the new man is true righteousness and holiness. It, he doesn't lie. But he lives and he speaks truth to his neighbor because we are all of one member, one of another. See that you see the difference of the, of, the, of the former life and the new life in Christ. We got the Bible said, you that we have to be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus that you got to be born again just in order to see the kingdom of heaven. You got to see. You got to be born again. What you mean born again? You got to be born of the spirit. You got to, the spirit of God. You got to be repentant. You, you, got to, you got to ask God into your heart so God is sort of cleaning your life. When, when you open your heart to, the, to truth and righteousness and you repent and you really remorseful for your sin, not, not, not remorseful that you got caught doing something wrong. No, that you are re remorseful because Christ 
has taught you the word and you know that you, your life is, is contrary to what you what, what it pleases God and you really want to repent of your sins, okay? And then and you ask Christ to come into your heart and, and, and save you and you repent. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, will come in and He will make dwelling in your place, in, in your heart, in your with the temple of God. That's where He wants to abide. So the Bible said, if we abide in Him and, and, and the Holy and His Word, to the Holy Word of God abide in us, and then the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, will take will bear witness of that truth. Find this truth, the Holy Word of God. That's why we got to eat the Word. We got to study. We got to be taught. Because it's new life in Christ. We, we, we don't know it. It's new to us. So we got to learn it. So we got to learn the process. Oh, we was taught wrong. Okay. We was taught by the first Adam. The first Adam taught us sinful with, with, with the old nature. Okay. The sinful nature. That's what the old Adam, the first Adam taught us. But the second Adam, which is Christ. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, he, he, he teaching us the new life, the new way. Okay. That pleases the Father. So we got to put off, that's why Apostle Paul was saying, put off that old conversation, put off that, that old stuff that wasn't pleasing to God when you were living in darkness, when you was alienated from God, when you, you were living in greed and, and, and uncleanliness. And, and he said, you wasn't taught of that. He said, you, you don't even know him if you're still doing these things. But if you was taught by him, now you're going to be living in truth. You're going to be living in righteousness. You're going to be living in holiness, which is a beautiful thing. I don't know why it seems so wrong to to teach and, and to walk in Christ. When it, it, it's, it's, it's so beautiful. Man, let's think about it. If everybody say, man, let's walk in Christ, there will be no more killings, <laughs> no more divorces. There will be no more cheating on, on, on husband and wife. There will be no uh, abusing children. There will be no need for policemen. There will be no need for for none of these things, why? If we all walk in Christ. And but no, but the world loves its own. The Bible even said, and Paul was talking to the the, the, uh, the Ephesians and, and Ephesus, the city of Ephesus was a um it was a sex, they had a sex goddess called a Diana, okay? And so what happened is when the when when, when there was when some of the, the citizens was converted over to Christianity and they believed the gospel. They still, they had to get, they had to put in this preaching. They had to put in what the, uh, the things that apostle was teaching it. And they didn't have the Bible back then. They didn't have it. So there was, these things was written for us, okay? But the but the apostles were teaching. They had the law. They knew what, they, they, they had the law of Moses and, and what not to do and what, and, and what to do. Thou shalt not. And all these things. And what the apostles now were telling them how to live for Christ. And they was, and they was hungry for the word. And But they had to be taught because the old way was saying, this is what Diana, this is what we used to serve. This is what we used to do with our bodies. This is what and it wasn't pleasing to God, but when righteousness came in, when they received the gospel, they got to be taught now how to live this new life. And Apostle Paul was saying, put all their old stuff that you was taught, that your eyes seen, maybe from a childhood up to now, you got to you, 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 you got to get rid of it. You, you, <laughs> the, the new man, you got to, the, the old man got to die. How in baptism, you got to, that's why the baptism represent that when you go down in the water, it's like a liquid grave. You telling God and, and you telling you a witness saying, I want to be baptized because I want, I want to live in the newness of life. I want the old man to be dead. And so I can't walk in the newness of life if I'm still carrying the old man. It's not possible. So if I got it, so I got to kill the old man through baptism. So when I come raised up out of the water, I'm representing this is my new life. The old man stayed in the water. It's like a liquid grave. He's dead. A new man came up out of the water. He, a new man came up. So now old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now I'm ready to walk in Christ. I can walk in the newness of life now because I want to be taught in righteousness. The old things that I used to do, it, it bothers me now. Even when I see it, it, it does something to me because it's not in me no more to live like that. It's not in me no more to talk like that. My hands don't touch dirty things no more. I want to raise my hand to God with clean hands with no shedding of blood. Oh, I'm going to lift my voice now in holiness and righteousness and preaching the gospel and preaching the truth, preaching life instead of cursing everybody and cursing myself and cursing my friends and, and cursing everybody because I don't know how to talk. But now I'm being taught and instructed 
in the word of God for my new life. Walking with Christ. That's the, that's the title today. Walking. Walking with him. How, the Bible says, how can two walk together except you agree? You can't walk with Christ and don't agree with him. So how can you have a conversation with Christ where he taught the scripture and you're not reading and you're not reading your Bible? You don't know scripture. So how can he talk to you when you're on a journey, walking through the park, or you're working through the day, and Christ said, I want to talk to you. And but you can't answer, you can't talk because you can't comprehend what he's saying. Why? Because you, <laughs> You, you, you can't agree to him because you don't have nothing in you. You, you. you don't have no word in you. That's why you got to be agreed. You got to walk in him. You got to you got to know his word. So when he started talking to you uh, and expounding on the scriptures, you know, it's just like when uh, when the, the disciples were walking on the road to Emmaus and Jesus connected himself to them, and they didn't know that was Jesus at the time. But when they came into the house and and, and he was and, and, and he broke the bread and he said their eyes was open but he vanished out of the sight and he said they were saying didn't our hearts burn when he opened up the scripture to us so that means they had that they, they knew him you know, they knew the scripture they knew what he was talking about they bear witness to it something that they heard and they heard from christ bear witness and they didn't even stay in that place and they turned around and went right back <laughs> to the place and, and start um shouting and witnessing that christ has risen and they had, they had seen the Messiah. He's risen. He's not dead no more. The tomb has been vacated. Oh, man. It's, it's a beautiful thing to walk in Christ. Youth, we have to, we got to walk in it. it is, it's, I don't know why they put painting the picture that walking with Christ and being a Christian is so bad when they're so healthy and beautiful. Oh, this world is saying, I don't know what, what people are drawn to this to cursing and they are drawn to drugs and alcohol and stuff they're killing their bodies and 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 just bring depression and, and, and destruction in their life and they and, and and they cleave on to these things and when god's saying no i'm going to show you a better way i'm going to show you a life that's so clean and pure i want you to be free from all these devices that's not of me they are satan and he got you bound but god said i'm going to i want you to live a holy a clean life liberated in me with joy and peace in your life and and we see that as so, so as something bad and wrong and i don't get it when people saying they watch the news and they seeing people getting shot every day people shooting people howling people shooting people in the cars at a stoplight because they angry road rage and people now they killing people the, the children killing their own parents and cutting their heads off and all this stuff and man and 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 and, and, and the society is still promoting this stuff and but and want to tell when you come to Jesus, they want to abandon him and tell you be quiet. That man, I don't, I, I, I just, I, I don't get it. I, I, I really don't get it. But I do get it when I read the Bible because Jesus said that the world loves its own. So you, but I'm telling you, don't be part of the world. If you're part of the world, the world and say Christ is not in you. It, there's no, no Christ. There's no. The, the Bible said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but should have eternal life. Yes, he loved the world for to bring them from salvation, but he don't love the things of the world. There's, there's no way. You can't walk with Christ and, 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 and walk with the world at the same time. You can't have two masters, youth. It got to be one or the other because you're going to please one and displease the other. You can't have two. And walking with Christ is the best refreshing. Believe me. I don't walk with both, but I'm still with Christ right now and going to stay with Christ. And, and, I, and before I separate from Christ, I want him to take me before I even separate from him. I'm, if I got this, if you already know, say, man, Brother Dylan's going to separate from me and so on, so on, so on. Go ahead and take me, God, because I don't never want to separate you, separate myself from you after you don't reveal yourself to me and I'm living this clean, beautiful life now. And you, oh, man, it is what took me so long. I'm, I'm angry at myself because I didn't believe the preachers at the beginning, I mean, they were trying to tell me, you don't, you don't, you don't blood, you need to do this, you need to read your Bible, come to Christ. And I, I thought I knew everything until my life turned upside down and I, and, and I hurt a lot of people, destroyed a lot of people. It just, it, it just, it, it, believe me, it, it, that's all comes when you live in the world of destruction. I, I'm telling you, if, if you're not walking with Christ, you're missing out on life. You And I'm trying to tell you a better way of, uh, a, a way that you can walk in a perfect love, a love that will forgive you, a love that will show you who you really are, a love 
uh, that would grant, grant you mercy, even though you don't deserve it, a love that has compassion, a love that is kind, oh man, a, a love that brings peace, a love that comforts you even in the storm. It, the love won't stop the storm from coming, but it will comfort you in the storm. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you walk with Christ. If you're not walking with him, learn to walk with him. Be taught in this new life. Kill the old man. You tell, tell God you want the old man to be dead. You want to put off all those former things. That you want to live and walk in the newness of life. And then put God's word in your heart. So when he wants to talk to you and you're walking with him, then you can have a conversation with him. Why? Because now you agree. Because what he's saying and what you're saying lines up. Amen. Well, God bless you, you. I hope this class was a blessing to you. If you're not walking with him, that's the best thing you can do. Best friend, okay? So put your shoes on, put your gospel shoes on, and let's start walking with Christ, okay? I'll see you next week for the last class for this book, and we'll start a new book. Love you. God bless you.